central concern of this book is to shed light on the history of Norwegian physical anthropology and the rise and fall of the idea of a superior Nordic race. This means that the book deals with scientific ideas that, in hindsight, appears to be not only morally wrong, but also absurd and bizarre. And it is an attempt at explaining how these ideas could be embraced by mainstream scientists only 70 to 80 years ago. The notion of a blonde, tall and blue-eyed Nordic or Germanic race was a key element in the ideology of the Nazis. They believed that this superior race had the right to expand at the expense of the rest of humankind and during the Second World War they put this idea into practice with brutal efficiency. But the Nazis did not invent this idea. In the early 20th century it was common to believe in the existence of inferior and superior races. And many held that the Nordic Germanic race was the most superior of all. And an important reason why many people held such beliefs was that they were assumed to be based on science. Scandinavia was uh, commonly seen as the cradle of the Nordic race, and this idea was legitimized, among other things, through the research done by Scandinavian scientists. So this book is about Norwegian scientists, that is uh, mainly Norwegian physical anthropologists, and their uh, involvement with the idea of the Nordic race. It is an effort at uh, trying to uh, understand how this idea arose in the first place, how it was legitimized, and how it influenced notions of nationhood in Norway and Scandinavia. Norwegian physical anthropologists had a particularly strong relationship with German science. And the final chapters of the book explores the relationship between Norwegian and German anthropologists in the years around the Nazi takeover in Germany. And it demonstrates how the notion of the superior Nordic race were abandoned by Norwegian anthropologists at the same time as their German colleagues became increasingly involved in the racial policy of the new regime in Germany.